Salutations. And welcome to Smart History. Today we are positioned within the Museum of Etymology in Vienna before the magnificent, remarkable, astounding feathered headdress that allegedly belonged to Moctezuma II of the Aztec Empire. Yes, it's quite amazing how this illustrious headpiece was composed. Constructed. Honed by feather artisans in that South American civilization, but relocated to Habsburg, Germany through a series of gifts to various royals. Actually, Mina, the way it ended up in Hernan Cortez's possession is still disputed. It was either gifted to him or seized, looted, pillaged by the conquistadors in the siege of Tenochtitlan. To make headdresses such as these certainly took a fantastic amount of skill, which is why those specialized feather artisans called Amanteca, who lived in the special area of the capital, took months to make these stunning Quetzal feather status symbols. The radiant Quetzal is not the only bird species included in the headdress, as we also see the spectacular, fantastical, resplendent turquoise feathers of the Contiga amabils, roseate spoonbill, scarlet macaw, and the beautiful russet feathers of the squirrel cuckoo. 450 feathers in total. Absolutely. However, most feathers in the headdress come from the Quetzal. Each is a tail feather, and each Quetzal only had two. Just think of it. Since the feathers only came from male birds, over 200 of this little guy's brothers and sons were killed for just two feathers each. The feathered headdress symbolizes power, status, wealth, and importance. Jade stones linked the wearer to the light and radiance of the sun and moon, while the turquoise and bluish green coloring represented, signified, emulated the water and agriculture, and therefore fertility, so critical to the Aztec experience. Yes, it was absolutely vital. It's important to consider the headdress ceremonial importance as it was worn by Aztec royals during rituals. The headdress also gives knowledge, understanding, insight into the economic strength of the Aztecs, since not all the materials were accessible in the empire's region and therefore they would have been traded for. We still have more to learn about the headpiece, I'm sure. Scholars even thought it was an apron for centuries. It's truly remarkable. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us today. Mm -hmm.